Okay, so the lighting has suddenly gone terrible. Anyway, <laughs> what happened? I don't know what happened, but uh, okay. just anyway, um, on with the show. We're back for another fresh of the stalls. One of two this evening, uh, myself and the Everfescent Paul Everfescent. Is that him? Yeah. Ever 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 Ernie, the autobiographical play by James Craze about his um, grandfather's service in World War Two. So, Paul, oh, let's start us off. Uh, yeah, first of all, it was very interesting and nice to see a story about World War Two as opposed to World War One, which we're getting so much of at the moment. Not to say that it's not good; it just made it an refreshing. Interesting, a refreshing yeah. change to the story that we, we're uh, being told at the moment about the, the history of World War One. A wonderful piece of I absolutely adored it. I, I really loved it as well. I loved how wonderfully understated it is, just because of the fact this is a man who, who served many years during World War II, but uh, it's not, nothing about it is over dramatic, nothing about it is sensational. It's just so human and irresistibly charming. Mm, it's very self-effacing. Uh, he admits right from the start he didn't do anything great, he didn't do anything noble, he was never a hero, he just lived a life and lived it to the best of his abilities. And that was quite beautiful. Um, it's a beautiful piece of physical theatre. Mm. Um, that was the most surprising thing. I've seen a lot of physical theatre and this guy gets it right. Very much so. 100% of the time, I'd say. I don't think there was one character that I didn't believe was a completely different character. Um, and everyth everything down to the, the nuance of the slight whistle of uh, one of his superiors on the uh, uh, on, on one of the ships he served. Um, there were beautiful touches throughout. I mean, even the anachronism of some of the music made me laugh. I mean, when it burst into In the Navy, you just think, well, why not? You can do that. It's music. It's just setting a, setting a scene. It's making us laugh. And that was just beautiful. I, I found the time whizzed by it. It was almost as if I wanted to hear more. I think that that was my only thing. Like, there's some of the stuff where he kind of like, the character just kind of like glosses through very matter-of-factly. And you think like, no, I really want to hear about your time in Hong Kong. I want to hear more about what you got up to in Bombay. It sounds like it's 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 so humble, but he's just said things. Yeah, I was in Bombay. It was cheap, and that's it. It's just was this wonderful sort of viewpoint of a sort of very down to earth and very real person. Mm. And let's face it, there are probably lots and lots of these stories out there. What the beautiful thing is that this one is being told mm. and told amazingly by Ernie's grandson uh, James Craze. Um, I actually, I actually was almost made to believe. Actually, I was made to believe that he physically aged as that piece went on. Oh well, I was amazed actually when he walked on. Originally, he came on as such an old man. It was very low lighting. There was obviously no makeup involved. But physically, you thought well, actually he's pulling that off. He could be. He could be in his eighties. And then suddenly he was a child. It was brilliant. And then he was a box. And then uh, just, just some really, really tight physical theatre going on there, which is beautiful to see when you see it down there. As much as we, re we can probably talk all night about how great James uh, is at the physical theatre, I really want to talk about the actual production. I thought the production was fantastic, uh, lighting particularly. Mm. I thought that everything that, oh, who directed it? Um, if you ever love a lighting cue, that's beautiful, especially when it goes right, and that bit where it went into complete black. It's yes, it's that was my question. Did make me laugh. I just thought that was hysterical. So no direction credit, but uh, Sarah Huxley is producer. Um, so I, I, I assume it just um, Sarah's just let James get on with it, which is exactly what he needs to do because he's done it marvelously. Uh, and then uh, lighting. Well, Alex Jordan as assistant producer, design and technical. Either way, the production team has just left James and stuff, and re uh, James do his stuff and really supported and added those little touches mm. like that lighting cue um, some wonderfully warm spotlighting as well um, when Cha Chamberlain? Neville Chamberlain ne yes, yes, Chamberlain yes, was giving the, the speech yes. it's just, it, it was, that was beautiful that was, was so tight yeah it was yeah, short it was, it was dramatic it was visually striking yeah. for a set that's just James Gray's 
and lights. Mm. That's it. it. And Tristan Bates is just this tiny little black box. Mm. And it was worked wonderful. So some of... There is actually mileage in this sort of piece. Because it can travel like that. Mm. There is nothing to take anywhere. It's a very, very, very small product. But it's the type of thing that could tour the UK very, very easily. Because there are lots of people with stories like this. I, I really, because this has always already been on with, with, to rave reviews at Theatre 503, mm. so it's great to see it here in the Fringe, and I really hope to see it go elsewhere as well. Mm. A brilliant piece of writing, an amazing piece of acting and performance. I, I would say it's much more performance because there's so much physic physicality in uh, James mm. Craze's performance. Uh, it's it's mind blowing. I, I, mean, I can't how how he can do that without breaking into too much of a sweat, I don't know. I know, it's, it's shocking really. It's, mind you, there's nothing of him, is there? As you see. <laughs> <laughs> Let's stick to the artistic side. Oh, yes. Um, there's less of his pants. Anyway, moving on. Um, but yes, so, excellent writing, amazing performance, and a really tight, superlative production. Uh, so this is something I would definitely say go and see. Uh, it's on for the rest of this week at the Fringe. It is definitely worth seeing. Um, I think we're just going to go away now and enjoy a drink and be slightly more pervy off camera. Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. Okay. See you later. Bye. When, uh, for Go. Is that the name of the musical? Go. Is it a musical? Mm. Musical cabaret. We'll see you later. See Goodbye. You later. Bye.